Artificial intelligence is no longer just the future. It is here and it is in our classrooms. From book reports to college essays, students are turning to tools like ChatGPT. But is this helping or actually hurting our education? So this morning, we are sitting down with Professor Ramtin Zand, an assistant professor at USC and the director of the ICAST lab to explore how AI is reshaping learning and what it means for the future of teaching. Thank you so much for being here today. We appreciate you. Of course, happy to be here. Well, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about your background. I mean, when we were talking about AI, this is definitely in your wheelhouse. So That's talk great. a little bit about what is, you know, the ICAS as the director and what you do there sure. at USC. Well, uh, we are running a research lab at USC and uh, this is a lab that works on AI and also bring it to real-time systems, real-world applications. Uh, we do have software hardware co-design, so we cover the full range of what Right. We need for AI. So we're building technologies for on the application side for social robotics, for wow. smart manufacturing. We are collaborating with a lot of companies. Our uh, lab is funded by different agencies from Air Force Research Lab to Navy to National Science Foundation and we're very appreciative of that support of course. Wow, that's but, great. Yeah, so we focus on AI in particular real-time AI technology. Okay, so when we talk about AI, I mean, it pretty much is everywhere. It's on every device. You Correct. can't go anywhere without somebody talking about, oh yeah, I asked ChatGPT this, this uh, question. So for this, do you think with your experience, especially when it comes to education, do you think that it's a problem in schools or in education as a whole? Or do you think that at this point we need to start adapting to it? Well, that's a great question. Uh, I think, uh, so I tell you what my position is, and then we can elaborate on it. There you it. go. Uh, I understand and appreciate the concerns around it. And also to be clear, in this context, when we're talking about AI, we're talking about generative AI, and as you said, things like ChatGPT and so on, because AI has been around for a long time, but this new generation of AI, which is generative AI and large language models, uh, is what we're talking about. Um, I do understand the concerns, and I do think there are challenges, but my position is, I'm extremely bullish about this technology. I'm excited right. about the opportunity that it can create, to be honest, not only for students, but also for educators like myself. So there's a lot we can do with it, and there's a lot that we have to address. And this is a timely topic that we need to focus on. So how do we focus it on it? So uh, we were talking about it. Some students are using it on their college essays, and some people are maybe concerned, well, they're not actually grasping the full concept of the topic. So is there any way that professors like yourself can actually find out they absolutely used AI for this? Well, if they know what they're doing, it's <laughs> hard to say that it's hard to understand it, and that it's done by AI. But also, uh, there's one fundamental limitation with these technology, and that is in technical terms called hallucinations. So this is referred to when uh, models like ChatGPT, right. they provide you an incorrect answer with a very high confidence. And in those cases, if you don't, uh, this is something that I always tell my students, if you don't have the capabilities to verify whether this response is correct or not, mm -hmm and the fundamental understanding of the, and knowledge of the topic, then you will be in trouble because as a professor or as a teacher, you happen to know enough about that topic. And if you put uh, forward an answer that sounds beautiful, but is not accurate, that's, somehow, that's one way for us to figure this out. Uh, but also, I should be honest, I think the technology is getting better. And it's getting more and more difficult. So we could see a lot more of this at earlier stages. Mm -hmm. With some of these new models, they're very impressive. Now, you know I have to ask you, Professor, is this considered cheating? Oh. <laughs> is this considered like a form of cheating? But now this is obviously, it could be different. But with somebody who it has the knowledge like you do, would you consider it more as a tool, like a reference tool? for these students or is this no you're 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 cheating on your on your essay or you're yeah. cheating on your assignment because again you're not grasping it because of these hallucinations well that's a great point i don't so it depends on how you design our assignments and homeworks mm. right if you go for the conventional way of designing these assignments yes of course it's cheating right right but is it something that we still need to do as educators right do we have to upgrade ourselves yeah. based on this technology so i personally don't design my 
assignments in a way that that can be cheated that way. There's no way right. that somebody can find it in your class. You're <laughs> gonna find all of it. We have to. I have to talk about this topic. Right. So what I do is, I ask them to interact with me. It's not just okay, go work on this and come back and give me the like a report that I'm gonna check offline. Right. No, we should talk about this. And now, if you use this technology to understand these concepts, and then we can communicate and have a conversation about this topic, and I see that you're understanding the topic, there's nothing wrong with that. Go ahead and use it. Yeah. Uh, so if I, if again, if you want to go to the classic mode and the conventional way of evaluating our students, yes, but but is it the right thing to do? Probably not. We have to we have to upgrade <laughs> ourselves too, right? Oh, of course. And of course, we're just a couple of days left before a lot of kids are going back into the classroom. I'm going to ask you kind of a two part question. I would love your advice to students. Mm. You know, as they are about to start school and. Maybe they just might get bogged on and might want to use ChatGPT with maybe just like a very simple report or a book report. Sure. What is your advice for those students uh, when they go and maybe get those homework assignments? Sure. I want to tell them that there is the there's a right way of using technology and there's a wrong way of doing it. So you can use it for your benefit. You can have a good starting point. You can ask, you can have a conversation with ChatGPT and it provides some information to you. But you should always understand that you should be the one who has the capability to pretty much fact check what is coming out of this. Yeah. That means that you have to develop the fundamental knowledge. That is important. If you develop the fundamental knowledge on that topic, there's absolutely nothing wrong. This is my point of view, of course. <laughs> to use that technology as long as you can verify it. Right. As long as you can go and say, okay, I didn't know this, but let me check and see if it makes sense. And if it does, well done. Yeah. So use this technology, but make sure that it's up to you to fact check what is coming out of it. Please fact check. I mean, yeah. we've been talking about it. ChatGPT is hallucinating. That's yes. what it is too. Yes. My In last question, what is your advice for teachers who may be a little hesitant with all this new technology? Yes, it's already late. We have to catch up. We have to educate ourselves. We have to accept that it is uh, here to stay. It's here. Yes, it's here <laughs> to stay. It's not something that we can stop. So we have to accept it, we have to use it, and I'm telling you, there are a lot of opportunities for us. There are many things we can do. Even in my research lab, we're working with this uh, local company called Van Robotics. Mm -hmm. They develop a social robot called Obby that teaches students math and reading. So now we want to integrate this technology, language models with, uh, with that robot to generate content in real time to help you know, teachers and uh, students wow. so we can use this technology in many different ways mm -hmm. as educators the sooner we learn how to use this technology the sooner we learn what are the limitations the better it is it's already late let's go <laughs> it's already too late guys it's already here in our society and in our classrooms thank you so much for stopping by and really give us this perspective on your knowledge of ai and i love the honesty listen it's here you guys okay and at this point you just got to learn to adapt to it thank you so much for of, inviting me of course absolutely all right, everybody, we're going to be putting this information on our website, WLTX.com, so you can think twice before you start using those AI tools.